Hi, welcome to Books Don't Review Themselves. I'm Kim, and today I'm going to be talking about The Other Misses by Mary Kubica. I'll start by reading the synopsis and then I'll get into the review. Sadie and Will Faust have only just moved their family from bustling Chicago to small town Maine when their neighbor Morgan Baines is found dead in her home. The murder rocks their tiny coastal town, but no one is more shaken than Sadie. But it's not just Morgan's death that has Sadie on edge. As the eyes of suspicion turn toward the new family in town, Sadie is drawn deeper into the mystery of what really happened that dark and deadly night. But Sadie must be careful, for the more she discovers about Mrs. Baines, the more she begins to realize just how much she has to lose if the truth ever comes to light. So I was torn on this one. I really enjoyed it, but I was torn between giving it a four or five. At first I was going to give it a five, but then I started thinking more about the end with the police work, and there's just some things that really stood out that seemed really far-fetched. So it kind of made me think of giving it more of a four. If I was talking about this book with someone else, they could probably easily raise raise me up to a five, but I was kind of flopping between the two. So basically, Sadie and Will end up moving to Maine with their two children, Otto and Tate. And the reason why they're moving to Maine, there's a couple reasons. Actually, there's a few reasons. The first biggest one is that Will's sister had committed suicide in the house and left behind a 16-year-old daughter whose name is Imogen. So they're going to move there to be with Imogen because they don't want to disrupt her since her mother just committed suicide and she only has a couple years left of school. The other reasons that they're moving there is that Will had an affair and Sadie cannot get over it. So they decide that if they move to Maine, they possibly can get a fresh start and hopefully, you know, their lives can continue. Third reason is that back in Chicago, Otto was being bullied and he brought a knife to school. So he was suspended or expelled and they decide just to move out of the town. You know, they're like, we're just going to get out of here and that's what we're going to do. So they move to Maine and Sadie is a doctor, so she makes really good money. So she's basically the breadwinner in the house and Will stays home with the kids. This is going to come in later on because Sadie never really got over his affair. So she is still thinking that Will is having an affair. So you're going to start getting her paranoia coming on with that. Then there's little things that start happening that she doesn't remember doing. She either blacks out or she just flat out does not remember doing it. And this started, we see it starting back in Chicago because Otto says that his mom told him to bring the knife to school to defend himself. And Sadie's like, I did not say that. She did not remember saying this at all. So it kind of started there and it probably even started sooner than that, but that's the point that we see it at. You have that big thing with her son, and then you just start having the smaller things. There's another thing with her other son, with Tate, and then there's various things with work. And then her and Imogen do not get along at all. And later on, you find out that it's probably, there's reasons behind that. Now, Imogen does seem like kind of a evil child to me. She is showing... Now, this, I'm not entirely sure if she did or not. I think she did, but then part of me, when I think about it later, I'm like, Did that really happen? So me as a reader was guessing, you know, did this really happen to Sadie? Did obviously Mary Kubica wrote it very well to have the reader guessing what was actually happening. Imogen had taken some pictures of her mother when she was hanging dead in the attic and she shows this to Sadie and Sadie, you know, freaks out. But the part that kind of gets me to and I understand this happens all the time in stories and it's to keep the story going, obviously, is instead of Sadie talking directly to Will right then to see what had happened, to tell him what had happened, she doesn't. She doesn't do it until later on. And Will doesn't really believe her. And then they go to see the pictures on the phone and the pictures are deleted. So that's my biggest thing. That's my biggest takeaway from thrillers and mysteries and suspense and horror. When you see something, say something. Say it right away. You know, and like, take a picture of it so you have proof for later on. Besides all that that's going on, there's also, this book is told mainly by by three people. It's told by Sadie, by Camille, and by Mouse. And then later on, you get a little bit of Will as well at the end. I think at this point, I'm going to kind of stop and say, because there's going to be some spoilers. So if you've read previous Mary Kubica books, or if you know you want to read The Other Misses, then you might want to stop here. Otherwise, if you're like, I don't care, I love spoilers, or hey, I may never read this book, continue to listen. So basically, you have Sadie, and you have Camille. And at first, I thought that 
Camille was a stalker, was stalking Sadie and wanted her life. But then for me, pretty quickly on, I realized that Camille was a personality, another personality of Sadie. So she has multiple personalities. Then you get Mouse later on. And for me at first, and I was very excited about this, I thought Mouse was Morgan's daughter. Now, Morgan is the dead woman. And I thought perhaps Mouse had also had multiple personalities. And Mouse is like six years old. So I was like really excited about this because I was like, so you have Sadie who has multiple personalities. And then if you have Mouse having personalities, multiple personalities you know how is Sadie gonna like mentor her is she going to look after her you know teach her how to get away with murder you know what what's going on there so I was I was excited about that now it didn't happen that way and I can see why Mary Kubica didn't necessarily do it that way because there were so many layers to the story and so many things going on I think if she would have had that too that I think it would have been too much but on the other hand I still think it would have been really cool so you have the multiple personalities going on you have Sadie losing time blacking out you have weird things happening I had talked about the thing with Otto then she also has another thing with her son Tate where they do the statue game or the statue dance and Sadie's like has no idea what this kid is talking about and so the kid is like I hate you mom and you know runs away and cries and so on and so forth so you have Sadie dealing with her paranoia that her husband is having another affair dealing with the murder and then you know dealing with her two children who are like hate her because they're saying she does stuff and she doesn't remember and then she's also dealing with Imogen who just hates her because she's a teen and for various other reasons you also have next door neighbors who say that they saw Sadie fighting with Morgan like the day before she was killed or the day she was killed and once again Sadie doesn't remember this so you have all these factors so Sadie starts looking into the mystery herself into the murder and she starts finding things out but she's not sure about them and there's so many other different aspects that are going on now I don't want to you the ending because even though I gave you some spoilers, the ending is definitely worth it. Was I shocked by the ending? No. I I thought it was a very good ending though. And after the ending, then there's like a wrap up as well that tells you what's happening with the people and their lives. And I really enjoyed that. And I thought this book was written like perfectly to be a movie. I would watch this movie even though I've already read the book and know what was going on. And just that ending to the final, final ending, it just, you could see that in a movie, you know, the wrap up. So I really recommend this book. And the police thing that kind of really bothered me was they're finding all this like evidence that she did it. The cop is just basically like, oh, well, we can't hold you because it's not like complete proof. And in my mind, it's like they have a enough and they know she has multiple personalities at this point I think you know you can be held like 24 48 hours before they have to let you go so the fact that they didn't even do that just that really annoyed me because I'm like there's so much evidence even though it's inconclusive you know she has multiple personalities so you need to look into that more that was the part that I'm just like ah And granted, they couldn't find the evidence again because something had happened to it, but I'm just stuck on the multiple personalities that they should have just kept her longer. Obviously, if they did keep her, then you won't have the ending to the book that you did. So I can totally see that. But on the other hand, I was just, I was just stuck on that little point. But really, really good book. And honestly, I would love to hear what you think after you read it, or if you've read any other Mary Kubica books and recommend any of them. I will definitely be checking out more books by her. So thanks for watching or listening. Like, subscribe, hit that little bell thing so you know when we have new episodes coming but we're gonna try to stick to a Monday schedule where I'm talking about new books that are just coming out and then on Friday Jess and I will be talking about things that we've read watched listened to for the week so hopefully you join us again and see you next time bye